Once you have completed tracing over the top of your design with that carbon tracing ceramic paper underneath it, you can go ahead and peel that off of there. And this tracing paper for ceramics is reusable, so please make sure to return that. And you can very faintly see my design on the plate. And a couple of things that you should be aware of before you start painting. Once you've selected your colors that you're going to use, uh, you're always going to want to make sure the lid is screwed on tight before you shake it up. Okay. I don't want to have any accidents because this stuff is expensive. All right, also I want to talk about choosing the correct size of paintbrush for the area that you're working on. It would not make any sense for me to use this great big huge paintbrush for this tiny little delicate area inside here. I would end up slopping glaze where I don't want it. And the other thing that you should know about this stuff is that it is transparent, meaning that you can see through it. So... Um, if you get an area where you don't want the color on, you're going to need to take a wet sponge and wipe it off, or you could take a curved blade tool and you could scrape it off. But that makes a really obnoxious sound, like you're kind of at the dentist or something, but it's just, it's just a really bad sound. But you could also use that. All right, so this is what this color looks like in my classroom. I have all the tiles made up. Each tile has three layers on there, so you can see what the color will look like after it's done. This is a gloss finish, so it has a really nice shine to it. Each tile is labeled with the name on it. And then that little code G stands for glaze, and the BL stands for blue. So make sure you always get these back to the correct place on the counter so we can keep them organized. Okay. So, choosing the right size of paintbrush for the area that you're working on is very important. So, this area down in here, I'm going to probably use a smaller paintbrush. Load up your paintbrush. Lightly brush it on there. Kind of like so. Now, you're going to need to do three layers of everything in order to get it to look like that test tile. So make sure you're keeping track of how many layers you have on there. Usually what I'll do in a situation like this is I'll just work my way all the way around this center because I want that center to be the same color like this here. And from there, I would just keep track. I've gone all the way around once and then I'll do a second layer and so on. So notice that I keep layering up my paintbrush. Like, don't let it go completely empty. Like, don't sit there and scrape and scrape your paintbrush bristles on that clay body to get the glaze out of there. Just keep your paintbrush loaded. Now, glaze is going to paint on kind of chalky, kind of thick, and it might appear uneven, but it will eventually, in the kiln, when it reaches to that almost 2,000 degrees that we go to, um, it will smooth out. So I'm actually going to choose a different size paintbrush to kind of get right up next to here and get a more straight line. And go ahead and turn things as you need to so that you can reach them easily. Okay, <clears throat> so I've gone ahead and I've painted one layer on there. I'd go ahead and paint everything else that I want to be that color and I would just repeat around. So the trickiest thing is remembering how many layers have you painted where? Um, if you're ever in doubt and you're like, did I paint two or did I paint three? Always paint another one on there, you guys. Um, once it's fired, we really can't go back and fix it. So when you're all done, make sure you get that cap screwed on there really tight of the glaze. 
and once we get that all complete it'll go through a glaze firing and everything will be nice and shiny